Yeah, that's why I started shaping out of necessity to have something that someone didn't want to make you. And it just, you know, you don't have to ask a favor of a shaper, you just got to figure out how to do it with your own hands and that's what really got me hooked is just if I get good enough at this to do exactly what I'm thinking, like where could that take my surfing and board building too, just more practice, more tries at it. Where would you stop your rocker, like right there? There. Like there. Yeah. Wow, look at how thin there. you already got that thing. That's sick. So is this two and a half? It's uh, going to be about two and a quarter. Oh, but really flat back. It's but really flat back, yeah. Sick. I don't like them too thick when they're flat well, they, like that. They they're can, yeah, they're just you like can make a, a two like and a, a half though. or a two and a quarter feel like two and a half. Exactly. Uh, the first board I shaped was a 9.5 longboard with the help of my friend Chris Cravey and the experience of first shaping a surfboard was being really lost but knowing that I have good direction because Chris was already a good shaper and knew how to build the sort of board that I was after making so I was just kind of like the first one you just honing in so hard and trying not to screw it up and really listening to every step so it came out pretty nice and I really enjoyed the building process but I enjoyed building it more than I liked riding it so as soon as I was done with it and tried it I wanted to just get back in the bay and make another one right away because I really like just being able to make a surfboard you know and something that you're able to ride in the ocean it's pretty nice. Are you doing an old school fish or are you doing... I'm going to do an uh, ASIM fish with the old school normal template on the toe side and then a side cut one on the heel side. Because I really like the way the side cut thing engages like backside bottom turns and front side off the top. So like it has like a real snappiness but sometimes it's too You don't want it on, your on the toes. No. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's made it so much more dynamic because I'm like always problem solving when I'm surfing. You know, you're riding something that's new that you're trying to like break down and figure out you know, what went right, what went wrong, what I want to incorporate into my next board and what I want to change about it. And it's a lot more just interaction between you and the board and plus the interaction that is with nature and, and all that. It just seems like something fun to do and you could fine tune it and like the gear the wheels are always spinning it's always really exciting to be trying something different and trying to break it up and figure it out oh nice sick it's a done nice I think it's mean i'm gonna feel under the arm so fishy. feels good yeah it still feels fishy i feel like the nose got pulled in I thought about doing that kind of bottom, like a little more panelly. Oh yeah. On the toe side, do you think it'd be nice with just a twin? The that panel thing would work sick with your um, with the squid, with the squid and yeah. just destroy it right there, like early finish style. Oh my, it's smoothing up that bit, huh? Yeah, I feel like a lot of times with shaping as well, um, as you. As you progress as a shaper, you start to follow the rules more. You start to, I feel like what uh, old shapers teach you are like rules or guidelines or little things that are, you know, quote unquote correct. So you start to pay attention to those things as you start to be familiar with more of those sort of rules. And so I think as it, like at the beginning of shaping, like your first couple goes at it and stuff, just how screwed up the voids are your, sh your surfing is really unique on those things and I think it's kind of a, a time that you can't reproduce I've never met anyone who's shaped like 10,000 voids and still shapes like they shaped in their first hundred like it's just natural you're going to change the way you do it or like become more clued into it and not make the same mistakes twice so I think it's an exciting thing for anybody you can get into it and start adapting to your own mistakes at first and then eventually you, you fix them. The main reason is because at the time I was hanging out with uh, Richard Kenvin and he was getting some asymmetricals from Carl Ekstrom who came up with the asymmetrical surfboard way back in the 60s. And so I think just seeing the boards that Carl was making for Richard and being, you know, 
around him when he was riding him and watching the boards work and in person and it was just something that for me it was an option you know I'd seen it before so it was obviously Carl's influence but then one day I just had a board with a broken off tail and it was perfect to make the toe side a little bit more stretched out and fishy and I cut away the heel side to give it a little bit more looseness and control and curve and all that and it just felt so natural like it looked really weird but it felt natural so after that I was sold I never really seemed like a disadvantage to me it always seemed like there was some advantages in there yeah totally it's just like surfing you know you could go out in the water a million times but if you've been away from it for a little while or if the waves are really good or something you always just just as excited to do it and shaping like when you're away from it if I go somewhere where I'm not shaping I'm so excited to get in the bay when I get home and stuff like that but you can obviously burn yourself out on it too if you're shaping like full production and then also trying to glass your own make your own I don't know you just compile it on <laughs> kind of more of a party it's a little looser though you know like when you're by yourself you're just like trying to hit every mark perfectly and and you're you know just it's different when you have a bunch of people in the shaping bay like telling you other ideas and I guess you're just kind of soaking it up at the same time as as sanding it off, I guess, and <laughs> just trying to play off what other people have to say and everything like that. What do you usually glass your boards with for the top? Um, it just depends. A lot of times I just do double four, single four, yeah. if they're going to be shreddy little boards, or fishes I'll do like six bottom and then like six four deck. Yeah, I've made an asymmetrical fish. Um, I feel like I kind of don't have a real nice fish in my quiver at the moment. I have really old ones that I've ridden all over the place, but it's nice to have like a wide, short little keel fin board in the quiver. You don't, I don't seem to break them as often, so you can kind of take them as a, as a short board that you don't plan on breaking, and they're just really fast and zippy and fun and. The one I made here, I made it asymmetrical, um, partly because it's easier to shape asymmetrical boards because both sides don't have to be the same. <laughs> In a different shaping environment, I wanted to make it as easy on myself as possible. And then also just because I haven't really ridden one that's asym yet, that's real subtly asymmetrical, like one side's just pretty much like a straight rail normal fish where the tail's real parallel and then the other side has a little bit of an in cut in it underneath the heel side to hopefully make it just a little more sensitive and I feel like the the ones with the in cut outline as you do turns they kind of sit through the lip really nicely like they feel like they lock into a little groove and and you could do a little bit more radical turns on them than just the traditional fish. Mm -hmm.